Welcome to the third video in our VEX and Robot C series. For this activity, we're going to be adding a limit switch to our program. Let's get started. For this scenario, the electrical engineer and mechanical engineer have decided that they would like to change our current program from an open loop system to a closed loop system. And what's the difference between the two? A system is considered to be open loop when there is no feedback to know if something has or has not happened. The difference between something like a fire pit and an electric stove. An electric stove, I can say I would like the temperature to get to 350 degrees and maintain that temperature. There's some type of probe inside the system that says when the temperature has reached that temperature and then it turns on and off the heating elements. A fire pit can't do that. If I wanted a fire pit to get up to 350 degrees and then stop, I wouldn't be able to do that because it's an open loop system. So what we want to do is add a limit switch to be able to start or initiate our actual program itself. So when I hit the start button, it will sit there and it will wait forever until I actually press a limit switch and then it will go ahead and initiate our program. So I know several people will want to go ahead and hop straight into the coding, but I would like for you to go ahead and continue doing the task description and the pseudocode until you get a little bit more comfortable, at least. So let's go ahead and think about the task description. We can leave a big portion of this. Their motor will run for three seconds after somebody has pressed a limit switch and then stop. So we'll go ahead and add that. The motor will run for three seconds after the limit switch has been pressed and then stop. Be very careful about how you write out your descriptions. I don't really want the word after. The word after means that I'm putting text before something else actually needs to happen. So truly think about the order of operations when you're actually typing it out. I want it to say something more like, after the limit switch was pressed, then the motor will run for three seconds and then stop. After the limit switch is pressed, the motor will run for three seconds and then stop. That will allow me to keep a lot of the same pseudocode that I already have. Start motor, wait for three seconds, stop motor. So I need to go ahead and place one more line of code before that start motor. And it's an until. I want the program to wait at a specific place until something happens. So it's not a wait for time, which is open loop. It's a wait for some type of condition to be met. So I'm going to go ahead and say until switch is pressed. Okay, until switch is pressed, then start motor, wait for three seconds, then stop. All right, so now I can go down in my task main and copy and paste. I'll go ahead and add my two forward slashes to turn that into commenting, and I now need the code that will make that happen. So I'm going to go over to my natural language, I'm going to go down to my untils, I'm going to look at what I've got. There are a lot of different options that are in the untils. So I think about the things that are possible, um, or the good ones that I might actually choose, and I like this until button press. But unfortunately if I hover over that, it'll tell you that the until button press is actually for an LCD, a piece of equipment that I don't have. So it's a special piece of hardware that has buttons on it that actually uses that code. So right now I'm not going to be able to use that code as part of my programming. I need something else, and there's nothing else that really says button press. The one that we want is all the way at the bottom that says until touch. Everything that's a press type thing is a touch sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this until touch, and I'm going to pull it over, drag it down, and then bring my commenting back up. Okay, so what it doesn't know right now is the actual sensor port. So I need to go talk to the electrical engineer and the mechanical engineer and decide where they're actually going to plug this sensor into the actual cortex itself. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. They've decided that they're going to put that into digital port one. So if I was replacing this sensor port, it'd be report, it would be replaced with a DGTL one. Not a big fan of using those because unfortunately like that one right there, it looks like it says DGT 11, where it actually says DGTL one, just with that specific font. But I'm not gonna type that anyways. I'm gonna do just what we did last time and I'm gonna put a real name in for it up in the motors and sensor setup. 
So I'm going to come to there, and this time I'm going to leave my motors tab, come over to the digital sensors, and this is going to be my start switch. Sensor type. These are all of the specific digital sensors that I have available to me. And yes, I could use a digital in-ish, um, but the one I want is actually going to be a touch. That's going to make it read the way that I want it to. I'll say apply and OK. And then this is not going to say digital one. It's going to say, again, making sure that I keep it case sensitive. I'll go ahead and hit compile. And it doesn't like something about it. Oh, it's because I capitalized the S by accident. So it was substituting a similar variable. It found in my coding that I had something called start switch, and it thought it was close enough to start switch, and it changed it for me. It would have ran just fine. There are three types of errors that you will see. You'll see yellow errors, which are just warnings that usually something has happened, like it's inserted a semicolon or changed some text as far as the case um, capitals to lowercase whatnot. You'll see red X's, which are terminal. Your program will not run with some type of red X. That's an actual error that it can't fix. And then white errors are just information. And one way or another, you've asked it to use something and then didn't ever do it. Um, there's a couple things that every once in a while will pop up as white. But usually, you'll see yellow and red. So I'll go ahead and compile again. And there we go. Um, this time, I don't have any errors. I'll do my fixed formatting so it'll take care of all my tabbing for me so everything is nice and lined up. So until touch, start, switch, then all the rest of this we've already checked. So fingers crossed this will do what it's supposed to do. Download to the robot. I'll make sure that my power is turned on. And I'll hit start. So right now my program is held right after this until touch. So it's waiting for this switch to be pressed, and as soon as it is, my motor should run for three seconds and then stop. Okay, so that's fine, but they would like us to view everything. They want us to get rid of all of the open loop type things. So we're supposed to get rid of the other wait as well. That wait for three seconds is now going to get replaced with a wait until touch. So after the limit switch is pressed, the motor will run. until the switch is pressed again and then stop okay so until switch is pressed then I'll copy that start motor and paste that so all I really need to do is replace that weight and we'll see okay so I'm gonna go ahead and delete this line of code and it looks like I should be able to just copy and paste this all right, so everything looks good. Until touch, start switch. Start motor, left motor. Until touch, start switch, stop buff motor. All right, everything looks fantastic. Let's go ahead and give it a try. Download to the robot. I'll make sure my power is on. And start. Well, that's weird. And over here, I'm right back to start again. And I looked through here, and I didn't really see the green. So I hit start. I see that first green. And when I hit my limit switch, it just ends the code. So I've got to try to determine what's going on. And I can tell you right now, it's not hardware, because it worked just a minute ago. So this has to be some type of programming error. What's going on? If you want, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can't figure out what's going on. If you figured out that both of these until touches are being read at the exact same time, you're correct. This is a digital world, and all of this is going so much faster that I can't get my finger off the button and press it again, because that's what I said. I said up here that it'll run again, the motor will run until the switch is pressed again. So it's not actually allowing me to let go of it. Okay, so now we've got it until the switch is pressed. We need another line of code in here. So until switch is pressed, then start the motor. Then I need to make sure that somebody actually lets go of it so that it can get pressed again. So I'm going to go ahead and put until let go. I actually know that it's going to be a different word. Let go is replaced with the word release. 
So until release. So until switch is pressed, then start the motor, then make sure I've let go of it, then I can go ahead and press it again, then stop the motor. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this until release. I want to insert that right here. I'll go over to my untils and I actually have an until release. You can drag that over, bring my commenting back up, and I'm going to steal a copy and paste. Okay, until touch, start switch, start the motor, until release, start switch, then left motor. And some of you may say, well, couldn't I just put that until release right after the until touch? That's not what the description says. The description says after the limit switch is pressed. If you put the until release right between the until touch and the start motor in the beginning, then I'd actually have to let go of it before the motor would start. So it really depends on how picky the electrical and the mechanical engineers need it to be. So what they've said, as soon as I press the button, make it go, and then make it stop once I press it again. So the motor's going to start, I have to let go of it, and then touch it again. So let's see if it works. start and now it does exactly what I want I can hit start again and this time I can hold it for as long as I want but the motor is running and then I have to release it and press it again and that's it we've now got the ability to add a limit switch to turn our open loop system into a closed loop system